Thank you so much, Megan, and to the entire Cleveland Clinic for the opportunity to be here to present. I do like consistency in uh, human behavior, and I appreciate it that from kindergarten to postdoctorate education, everyone sits in the back of the room. <laughs> All right, so my name is Gary Ulaner. I'll be talking a little about um, uh, imaging, and in particular, molecular imaging and therapy. Here are my disclosures. I also disclose that I like teaching molecular imaging and therapy beginning at an early age. These are, this is my son, Ilya, and my daughter, Annabelle, helping me at a PET-CT course that we used to run pre-COVID in New York, and here they are now post-COVID helping me in Southern California, and you can see when you start education early, people really pick it up fast. <laughs> so if you're looking for junior faculty in radiology, I have some great candidates for you. So let's start off with uh, FDG PET-CT, because I believe this is now the standard for uh, staging of locally advanced uh, breast cancer and for evaluation of metastatic breast cancer. When I started at Memorial Sloan Kettering about 13, 14 years ago, uh, it was CT and bone scan, and now I am very pleased to see that this has migrated to FDG PET-CT um, by many practitioners, and this is the tremendous data that has accumulated why. In a locally advanced disease, we can see about a 15 to 30% upstaging rate to stage four, which markedly changes uh, prognosis and treatment management. And in stage four disease, um, uh, the FDG PET-CT is more accurate than CT and bone scan in evaluating treatment response and identifying sites of recurrence. Probably the most important and recent of this uh, data set is a, a, a prospective multi-institutional trial from Canada, which demonstrated that FDG PET-CT finds distant metastases in locally advanced breast cancer patients at twice the rate of CT and bone scan, and is really, I now believe, the standard for uh, staging these patients wherever FDG PET-CT is, is available. So I'm a radiologist. I like images for the proof of this. Here you go. Locally advanced breast cancer, the CT nor the bone scan can find the osseous metastases that are found on FDG PET. This is a biopsy proven site of metastasis. This changes your locally advanced disease to distally metastatic disease with tremendous treatment implications. This is an example of how pre-treatment on a CT or bone scan, there is no evidence of disease, but post-treatment there are new lesions, so this looks like progressing disease, but when you add the FDG PET, you can see that there was actually disease at baseline, and after therapy it is now treated disease. A tremendous change in advance, um, and I encourage people on ductal malignancies to utilize uh, FDG PET for the staging of their patients. Uh, and this is why uh, 10 years ago, the NCCN said do not use FDG PET uh, for patients with breast cancer, and now they uh, suggest FDG PET in both locally advanced and metastatic breast cancer patients. However, as we are all here to hear more about, um, uh, lobular breast cancer is different than ductal breast malignancy. Lobular breast malignancy accounts for, some people say, 10 to 15 to 20 percent of malignancies. ILC is uh, distinct from ductal by loss of a gene called CDH1, which encodes for e-cadherin, and that uh, molecule is a cell adhesion molecule, so you lose cell adhesion, and pathologically you can see the ductal malignancies grow as ball of cells, and lobulars grow out in sheets and lines, which, uh, so there is fewer cells per unit volume of tumor tissue. This makes them more difficult to detect on every imaging modality uh, currently considered standard, mammography, ultrasound, MR, and yes, FDG PET-CT. Right. There is a, a, a now a, a substantial amount of data demonstrating that lobular breast malignancy is less avid for FDG than duct, its, its ductal uh, um, uh, 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 comparators. And the Lobular Breast Cancer Alliance has uh, generously um, uh, advertised that lobular breast cancer um, uh, has different sites of metastatic spread, I won't say different, but different propensity. So it loves to grow again in sheets and lines along the pleura, the peritoneum, along the GI tract, which makes it harder to detect on imaging modalities uh, like CT scan. So lobular breast malignancies give us a conundrum. The upcoming uh, European Association of Nuclear Medicine and Society of Nuclear Medicine Molecular Imaging guidelines for using FDG PET specifically say this is for 
No specific type breast cancer is what we call ductals, excluding lobulars because this is all too common in lobulars. You have lesions that on the CT look like metastases but are not FDG avid and can falsely give you a sense of security. But you can see that in this particular patient, there's no lesions prior to the diagnosis and new osseous lesions after the diagnosis, and these are biopsy-proven osseous metastases. This is the similar phenomenon, no disease at a baseline, a few new lesions on a spine MR for symptoms, an FDG PET is performed, which shows no lesions, so someone was falsely uh, secured that this was not malignancy, and then, of course, a couple of months later, we can see more widespread metastatic disease. And this is just not for the bones, but we say that this grows along the pleura, the peritoneum. This is gastric wall thickening, which we just shouldn't see, the fluid, the hydronephrosis that's caused by retroperitoneal disease, and none of it is FDG avid. So be wary. There are a substantial number. Um, not all, and, and actually not even most, I'd say probably, while well, there's no published d prospective data on this, I'd say most lobulars are still FDG avid, and I like to give breast cancers at least one opportunity to be FDG avid, but there's a substantial minority, maybe about a third of them, that are not FDG avid, and that can give you a false sense of security. So enter molecular imaging and therapy. This is a field which targets individual molecules as opposed to FDG, which is following metabolism. So you have a target cell, a target being expressed on or within that cell, a binding agent that hits that target like a key fitting into a lock, and then that binding agent is linked to a radioisotope. If this is a low energy emitting radioisotope like fluorine 18, you have developed a PET radio tracer for imaging. If this is a high energy radioisotope like lutetium-177, which emits beta molecules, this is a therapy agent which can impart enough tumor, uh, enough radiation to kill tumor cells. So we'll start with estrogen receptor targeted imaging with fluoroestradiol. Cancer cell breast cancer target the estrogen receptor. The binding agent is estrogen, which is physiologically available in all of our bodies. And it is linked to fluorine 18 producing uh, fluoroestradiol, which allows us to perform whole body non-invasion invasive assessment of estrogen receptor. There are a number of uh, uh, appropriate uses for uh, FES in patients with breast cancer. I'm going to highlight for this particular talk the growing role in a uh, potential role for lobular breast malignancies. There, is, there are several groups now that have published smaller series suggesting that the uh, fluoroestradiol in PET imaging can detect metastatic lobular breast cancer better uh, and more reliably than FDG PET to the extent that some patients you see disease on the FES and not on the FDG. We have uh, extended this to a larger prospective uh, clinical trial of 124 subjects, which we are one subject away of finishing the cohort, so we're getting ready to uh, 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 to bring this to a larger attention and not to finish the finish uh, to spoil the punchline, but. It, it works, FES works better in lobular than, it, than FDG does. This is broken up into two cohorts, cohort one, which are locally advanced disease, cohort two, with patients with treated disease and suspected recurrence. Biopsy is used as a standard of care so that all patients have a pathologic correlate proving disease. Here's an example from the trial of a patient with locally advanced lobular breast cancer. FDG doesn't see the local or distant disease. FES sees the local disease as well as distant metastases, which this one is biopsy proven. And in patients in cohort two, an example for patient with suspected recurrence, minimal, uh, 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 minimal findings on the FDG PET, more than 20 very avid osseous and soft tissue metastases on the fluoroestradiol. I hope that this will encourage people to, be, to uh, try uh, fluoroestradiol PET on their patients uh, with, that have lobular breast cancer that you highly suspect uh, the recurrent disease uh, but is not found by other imaging modalities. This is the comparison for FDG PET to lobular. The FDG indeed found the lesions in the lung. This is biopsy, but it's not cancer. It's a benign granulomatous inflammation. And this is one of the problems with FDG. It's tracking metabolism, not a specific molecule. So anything that's metabolically active, including many infections and in inflammatory uh, uh, causes, will be FDG avid, not just malignancy. That lesion is not FES avid because 
Inflammation doesn't express estrogen receptors, but it does find multi-organ system disease, which is biopsy proven. So I believe FES is probably the leading candidate for molecular imaging and therapy in lobular breast cancer. I'll introduce you to a few others that are in early clinical stage development, such as fibroblast activated protein or FAP. In this case, the tumor cell is not the cancer cell, but rather the tumor stroma that's supporting the cancer cell. FAP is expressed in wounds, and tumors have been described as wounds that never heal. Okay. So you find the, fat, the, the tumor stroma expresses FAP, that target. The binding agent are these FAP inhibitor analogs, and then they're bound to either uh, a, a gallium-68 or this one is uh, FAPI-74 is bound to uh, fluorine-18. And uh, uh, these are found in multiple, uh, FAP expression is found in multiple tumor types. So this was the image of the year at the Society of Nuclear Medicine annual meeting in 2019, demonstrating the potential of FAP-targeted imaging uh, for diagnosis of malignancy, particularly I like um, you know, we're looking at it developing uh, uh, in information in breast cancer, and there are now early trials using this specifically in lobular breast cancer with pretty good results compared to what we now call the standard of care of FDG. In addition, I'll introduce gastrin-releasing peptide receptor, uh, which is involved in uh, uh, endocrine regulation. So here the tumor cell is, again, breast cancer, because it, for whatever reason, some breast cancers, as well as some other forms of malignancy like prostate cancer, a certain percentage of them express GRPR. The target is GRPR. The binding agent is these bombesin analogs, which bind to GRPR. And again, they're labeled with either gallium-68 or fluorine-18, producing images um, for us to perform whole body uh, uh, imaging. And there is early work in patients with breast cancer demonstrating that these new analogs, again, can detect disease and may compare, uh, may be uh, uh, valuable compared to FDG in a smaller subset of patients. So maybe this agent is not going to be particularly valuable for imaging because only a certain fraction of breast cancer and lobular breast cancer patients express it. But I'll note that FAP and these GRPR targeting agents, uh, unlike FDG and FES, which can't be linked to beta emitting, or we don't have the radiochemistry yet to link them to beta emitting therapy agents, these can easily be linked to beta emitting agents. You swap out the fluorine 18 or the gallium 68 here, you put on a lutetium 177, and now we have clinical trials uh, in uh, uh, um, uh, ongoing for evaluation of these agents, not just for imaging, but for therapy of patients with uh, ductal and lobular breast cancer. Right. Um, uh, to be thorough, I'll mention uh, uh, Oximin, which is FACBC. Uh, this isn't really a molecular imaging agent. This is more metabolism like FDG. FDG is a sugar molecule. Uh, FACBC is a um, uh, amino acid analog. Uh, and there is uh, early uh, work demonstrating that lobular breast cancers um, uh, may be utilizing more amino acid than uh, sugar in their metabolism, and therefore you can detect uh, lobular breast cancers uh, better with these amino acid analogs than you can with FDG. There's an ongoing clinical trial at uh, Emory University led by Dave Schuster evaluating uh, um, flucyclovine, oximin, or FECBC, uh, all names for the same thing. Uh, and demonstrating that disease that is not found on CT bone scan or sometimes FDG PET can be picked up with the uh, amino acid targeted agents. So here's my summary. This is the current state of FDG, excuse me, of PET CT imaging for invasive lobular cancer. The standard is still FDG, but there's a significant minority of patients that don't express uh, or don't are not avid for FDG, so that could give you a false sense of security. I think the leading candidate is currently fluoroestradiol for estrogen receptor targeted imaging. There's also advancements in uh, 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 FAP. Um, and uh, uh, bombesin analogs, uh, which could be used for both imaging and therapy. And then there's another metabolic agent uh, based on amino acid metabolism, which is also in development. With that, I'll introduce you to the Hogue Molecular Imaging and Therapy Center. This is where I live. Um, down here in this office, and we have three lead line treatment areas for the um, uh, administration uh, of a novel 
um, molecular imaging and therapy uh, agents. We have 17 clinical trials currently uh, ongoing. And if anyone has interested in learning more, here's my contact information and the contact information of Beth Thompson, who's our clinic coordinator and lead nuclear medicine technician. She really does all the work. I just signed the papers. And uh, if you're interested in more molecular imaging and therapy, I run a annual molecular imaging and therapy course. Um, the next one will be next uh, April in 2024. Come visit sunny California. There are no tornado warnings and you get wonderful weather, great food, and the ocean. Uh, finally, we're having, we're starting a molecular imaging and therapy fellowship at Hogue starting July 2024. So if you have any trainees that are finishing di uh, radiology or nuclear medicine training and are interested in a one-year fellowship in every uh, FDA-approved agent and all of our clinical trials, please feel free to send them my way. And with that, I'll say thanks to everyone who participated in the work that I presented, particularly the radio chemists who are always the smartest people in the room of molecular imaging and therapy, and without them, I would be doing fluoroscopy somewhere. <laughs> particularly to thank John Katzenellenbogen uh, from the University of Illinois, who is the developer of, uh, of FES and really is the one who started the entire field. Thank you so much for your attention. <laughs>